Dear classmates, welcome back to Combinational ATPG. Today we are going to introduce a very important deterministic test pattern generation algorithm, the potent algorithm. In this video, we are going to introduce the idea of potent and the three important potent heuristics. Then we will describe the algorithm in detail, and then we will conclude the potent algorithm. If you find that the algorithm is very difficult to understand, please don't be frustrated. The algorithm is indeed very difficult because it makes decision at internal node. For this small example circuit, which has six internal nodes. So we have 2 to the power of 6 equal to 64 decisions to make. This is a huge decision tree. However, Poden proposed to make decision only at primary input. For this circuit, it has only three primary input. So the decision tree has only 2 to the power of 3 equal to 8 decisions. This is a much smaller decision tree. And therefore, potent is faster than the D algorithm. The potent algorithm was proposed by IBM Dr. Guo in 1981. The full name is path-oriented decision making. There are three important ideas. First, Holden only allows assignment to primary input. It does not assign internal nodes. So this greatly reduces the search tree. Second, after assignment of primary input, we perform forward implication. So there is no justification needed. What is the reason? Please think about it. We have a question in FFT. Number three, we flip the last PI assignment when there are two failure conditions. Conditions A, the target four is not activated. Condition B, there is no propagation path to any output. Let's see an example first. Given this circuit, consider this stuck at 0, 04 at gate G1 output. If we want a logic 1 at gate G1 output, we can backtrace to input B and we assign a 1 here. However, we still cannot achieve our objective. So we backtrace again to input A and we assign A to 1. In this way, we generate a D at the gate G1 output. Now we want to propagate D through gate G3. So we need an objective that is a logic 0 at gate G2 output. If we want to achieve this objective, we can backtrace to input C and we assign C to 1 and then we assign input E to 1. In this way, we generate a 0 here so that we can successfully propagate D to gate G3 output. Now we have two propagation paths to choose. We can either propagate it through G5 or G6. Let's say we select the upper path. So the objective now is we want a 1 at gate G4 output. And then we backtrace to primary input H equal to 1. If we assign this primary input, we can generate a 1 here. So we propagate D 
to the circuit output. In this way, we generate the test successfully. During the test generation, we only assign primary input. We don't assign any internal values. Also, there is no justification needed. This is a simple potent example. Now let's see the flowchart of the whole potent algorithm. Initially, we set an objective. We backtrace to assign one primary input to achieve our objective. Then we perform a forward implication, which is simply a logic simulation. If we have D or D prime reached at the primary output, then we generate the test successfully. Otherwise, if there is still no D or D prime at primary output, we can try to assign more primary inputs. If test is impossible with current assignment, then we would need to check if there is any untried combination of assigned primary input. If so, we need a backtrack. That means we set untried combination of values on the assigned input and we continue to forward implication. Otherwise, if there is no more choice to backtrack, then the test generation fails. So this is an untestable fault. This is a conceptual flowchart of ODEM. In the last slide, we have several terminology to explain. First, we need to determine an objective. If D or D prime has not appeared at the fault site, then the fault has not been activated. So our objective is to activate the fault. Otherwise, if D and D prime has appeared at the fault site, then our objective is to propagate the fault effect. Given an objective, we need to determine the primary input value. We need to backtrace to choose a primary input. If there is any conflict occur, we need to backtrack. Please note that backtrace and the backtrack are two different concepts. Although they are different in only one letter, but their concepts are totally different. Backtrace means that we go back to a primary input of a certain signal in the netlist. On the contrary, backtrack means that we go back to our last decision in the decision tree. Now it's time for quiz. Please use the potent to generate a test pattern for each stuck at one fault. Please mark your objective and uh, your backtrace. Now please pause the video and uh, give it a try. Have you finished? Our objective is to activate the fault. So the first objective is h equal to 0. We backtrace to input a and assign a to 0. And uh, we generate a 0 slash 1 at signal h. Now we want to propagate it to the primary output k. So our second objective is to make j equal to 0. Then we backtrace to input b and we have assigned input b to 1. If b is 1, then e is 1, j is 0, and uh, we have a d prime reach at output k, so we generate a test using the potent algorithm.
During the process, we have two objectives and uh, two back traces. Have you got it correctly? Now we will introduce three heuristics proposed by the potent algorithm. We mentioned earlier in this chapter that ATPG search for a successful pattern in a large decision tree. Because the tree is very large, so we need smart heuristic to speed up. There are two types of heuristic. The first type of heuristic help us to prune an impossible subtree as soon as possible. For example, in this search tree, if we can know that the right hand side of the subtree is actually not possible, if we can prune it early, then we can save a lot of search time. A second kind of heuristic help us to find good assignment as soon as possible. For example, if we can know that B equal to zero is a good assignment, then we can reach to a successful solution earlier. Please note that heuristics are experience-based rules that help us to make correct decisions. However, heuristics do not guarantee to be correct all the time. In the potent algorithm, we have three questions to be answered. And the potent algorithm proposes three heuristics to answer this question. Question number one. What paths do we backtrace? Question number two. What input values do we assign? Question number three. What path to propagate D or D prime to the primary output? We need three good heuristics to answer this question. Good heuristics are simple and effective most of the time. So for question number one. What path do we backtrace? Important, they have proposed a simple heuristic to make this decision. For a decision gate, that means only one input can control gate output to the objective value. For example, suppose that the objective value is a zero at the end gate output. This is a decision gate and the potent proposed to choose the easiest gate input to achieve this objective. For example, if A is a primary input which is the easiest gate input, then we just directly assign A to zero, then we can achieve this goal. The other kind of gate is the implied gate, which means one gate input cannot control gate output to the objective value. For example, if the objective value is 1 for this N gate, then potent propose to choose the hardest gate input. What is the reason of doing this? This is because we want to find out if a test exists or not as soon as possible. If we search, for example, input A and found that actually A equal to 1 is not possible, then we know that this objective cannot be achieved. So we can backtrack to another objective. In summary, heuristic number 1 propose a simple heuristic to make correct backtrace as soon as possible. Here is an example. Suppose that our objective value is C equal to 0. This is a decision gate for this N gate. So we backtrace to the easiest input, which is V. However, if the objective value is 1, then we would backtrace 
hard input which can be either U or Y so how do we know C1 is easy and C2 is hard we can judge that by looking at the level of the signal or we can use other testability measures such as scope to make this decision now it's quiz time again given this circuit and uh, the corresponding scope testability measure please generate a test for H stuck at 1 4 please do it twice in the first time we follow the potent heuristic in the second time don't follow the potent heuristic let's see what's the difference now please pause your video and uh, give it a try Have you got it? According to our controllability measure, CC0 here is 1, and the CC of L is 3. Now our objective is H equal to 0. This is a decision gate. Following potent heuristic, if we backtrace to A, we can assign A to 0 and uh, we can generate the test without the problem. However, if we don't follow the heuristic, let's say we choose the hardest input and uh, we would make a decision so that B is 0 and the C is 0. In this case, E would be 0 and J would be 1, which would block the propagation. So we would need a backtrack that wastes a lot of time. This small quiz shows that the heuristic really help us to make smart decision early. The second question we need to answer is what values do we assign to achieve the objective? The potent algorithm proposed to keep the inversion parity along the backtrace path. Suppose the objective value is 1 and we backtrace along the blue path. We would assign a logic 1 here because this is an even inversion parity and uh, we can assign the same value as the objective value however if we backtrace along the green path we would assign input 0 here because there is an inversion along the path for odd inversion parity we would assign an opposite value to the objective value in summary, heuristic number 2 counts the inversion parity along the backtrace path for primary input assignment. Question number 3. What paths do we propagate? There are many possible paths to propagate the D or D prime to primary output. For a successful propagation, all gate output of the chosen path must have x values. This is called an x path in the potent algorithm. For this example, in this circuit, if we want to propagate the D prime, we have two x paths: the blue path or the green path. This is not an x path because the values has been determined so there is no x along the path if there are more than one x path to choose Holden algorithm proposed to choose the shortest x path for example the green path is shorter than the blue path 
so we would choose this as the D frontier and we would propagate through this gate during the potent algorithm if the all the X paths disappear that means we have done something wrong we will need to backtrack in summary heuristic number three try to propagate the full effect along the shortest X path however as we mentioned earlier heuristic are not guaranteed to be correct all the time this example shows an example with heuristic number three but the guess was wrong consider the stuck at one four we perform a backtrace because we have one inversion so the assigned value b is opposite to our objective value so we would assign b to one the objective was not achieved so we backtrace to c again and we assign c to one now the objective has been achieved so we have a d prime here let's now continue to propagate along the x path there are two x paths to propagate let's say we select g5 so the objective is a equal to 1 which can propagate the effect through G5 and we also have the output of G1 and the output of G4 during the simulation now we have two X paths one X path is G6 G8 the other X path is G8 according to heuristic number three we would choose G8 because it's shorter so now we try to propagate through G8 to do that we would set the objective to be G6 equal to 1 if we perform a backtrace we will backtrace to input D if we assign input D to 0 after the logic simulation we have 1 0 and the 1 and the 1 that means the X path has disappeared so we made a wrong decision now that's clear the figure let's backtrack our last decision we change D to 1 so this would be flip G7 would be flip G6 would be flip eventually we have got the correct solution and generate the test this example show that heuristic number 3 is not correct all the time now let's look at the potent algorithm in more detail the first function we will introduce is the objective function the objective function pick an objective there are two cases first if the four has not been activated then we set an objective to activate the four second if the four has been activated then we set an objective to propagate the full effect given a target four on net n stuck cat v prime value if the four has not been activated like the figure on the left the signal of net n is still unknown then we simply return the objective as 
net n the objective value is v which is opposite to the stock type value v prime otherwise the four has been activated like the right hand side we now want to propagate the four effect d let's select a gate g from the d frontier on the shortest x path and we select an, an assigned input n of g so the objective value is to control net n to a non-controlling value suppose that v is the non-controlling value of gate g for example for an end gate the non-controlling value is 1 for the OR gate the non-controlling value is 0 so we simply return the objective net as n and the objective value v which is the non-controlling value the backtrace function translate our objective to an input assignment this is essentially a depth first search algorithm which recursively calls itself until it hits a primary input so the break trace function goes like this suppose n is our objective net vs is the objective value initially we assign v equal to vs and then we have a loop while n is a gate output along the backtrace path if the gate n is NAND gate, NOR gate or inverter then we flip the objective value this is to keep track of the inversion parity and then we will determine whether it's an implied gate or decision gate if it is an implied gate we will choose the hardest gate input if it is a decision gate we will choose the easiest gate input then we would recursively call the backtrace function again the objective net is n and the objective value is v at the end of this function we would hit a primary input then we simply assign the primary input to value v now here is the whole function of the potent algorithm this is basically a branch and bound search algorithm given a fault and the stock cap value v fault we first check if d or d prime already reach a primary output if so the test has been generated successfully otherwise we check whether the test is possible or not if there is no possible to generate a test then we return a failure there are two reasons for this failure first is that target 4 cannot be activated the second reason is that x pass disappeared if a test generation is still possible we call the objective function given the four and the stock up value we would obtain the objective net n and the objective value vs then we backtrace on this objective we would find a primary input and the value then we assign the primary input to the value and run a forward implication if the test has been generated successfully then we get 
the test pattern. Otherwise, we would need a backtrack. Backtrack means that we flip the last assigned PI value. We change it to V prime and run Holden again. If we generate the test, then we return success. Otherwise, that means PI cannot be either 1 or 0. So we release the primary input as a node and uh, we return failure. So we prune this node completely. Now, let's look at the decision tree of Holden algorithm so that we can understand why it's a branch and bound search algorithm. In the decision tree of Holden, every decision is a primary input. So let's say initially PI is 1, P2 is 0, P3 is 1, and uh, PI4 is 1. We are now trying this combination. If we found out that there is no test possible, we will flip the last decision, which is PI4 equal to 0. We call this a chronological backtrack. This was first proposed by DPLL for a sustainability problem as early as 1962. Their concept was to flip the last decision that has not been tried. In this example, we are now trying PI4 equal to 0. Please note that we have a check in this node. That means the initial assignment of PI4 equal to 1 has been rejected and the alternative is being tried. Suppose that this branch has shown to be no test possible, then we need to backtrack since both PI4 has been tried. So this subtree PI3 equal to 1 is completely removed and we release PI4 to X. In this way, we prune the PI3 equal to 1 subtree. Now we backtrack to PI3 equal to 0 and now we are trying this combination of PI4 equal to 0. Suppose there is again no test. We backtrack to PI4 equal to run Unfortunately, if there is still no test, then we will backtrack up to this level and uh, we remove this subtree completely and we backtrack one level up since both PI3 has been tried. So we remove this PI2 equal to zero subtree completely and then we backtrack to other combination. As you can see, we prune a subtree as soon as we see a conflict occur so that we don't need exhaustive search. This is why we call Porton a branch and bound search algorithm. In summary, the Porton algorithm proposed to assign primary input value not internal value, so we greatly reduce the search space. During the potent algorithm, we perform only forward implication. There is no justification needed, so we save a lot of time. There are three heuristic proposed. Heuristic number one, backtrace the easy or hard input for decision or implied gate, respectively and it also keeps the path inversion parity for the primary input value to assign. 
We also propagate the full effect along shortest X path. And the potent algorithm is a branch and bound search algorithm. At the end of this chapter, we want to raise some FFT for you to think about. Question number one. Is potent algorithm a concrete ATPG algorithm? That means, are we guaranteed to find a test if it exists? Question number two. Why does potent have no justification? Question number three. We have already shown an example where heuristic number three fails. Can you give me some more example where heuristic number one and the number two fails? I hope you enjoy this video. Please think about this interesting FFT. Bye bye.